Hi Darplings, it's Elaine Mock and today I'm going to be doing my Dream Plastic Surgery Clinic review video for you guys. Um, this is part 3 of my series revolving uh, my plastic surgery experience and uh, I will be posting things like vlogs, uncut consultations, and any video revolving uh, plastic surgery, uh, maybe like uh, what to pack for plastic surgery, things I knew before I had plastic surgery, and maybe an individual video of each procedure that I had and my thoughts on it. So I did want to make it clear that the surgeries were sponsored. Um, I was contacted by a management company that was helping Dream find influencers. Uh, but just because it was sponsored doesn't mean like my opinion and my review is skewed. I feel that you know you you can see the results of my plastic surgeries. So you know you have your own opinion about that, and I have my own, and you know everybody has their own version and standard of beauty. Blah 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 blah. But I just wanted to make it clear that it was sponsored, and but I'm not gonna let that reason um, influence any of my points that I'm going to talk about. So after I posted the video warning other influencers not to be pressured to get surgery just because it's sponsored, um, after that video I was reached out to by dozens and dozens of clinics and management companies wanting to offer their service to me, wanting me to get surgery from them. Um, so the reason I picked Dream out of all these other clinics is because of their reputation and their results. So the funny thing about the Dream Clinic and I is that Dream was one of the potential clinics that I actually wanted to visit in the future. Uh, none of this like YouTube or sponsorship thing, it was one of the clinics that I personally wanted to go to. And I was just so happy that I held out and you know I just didn't jump at the free opportunity from other clinics uh, because, you know, it was sponsored. <laughs> and I'm just so glad that I ended up with a clinic that, my dream clinic, and yeah, I was just so excited when I was contacted and if I wanted to, you know, do this. So just very quickly, uh, Dream is a clinic with natural results, little to no negative reviews, and they also appeared on the reality show Let Me In, uh, the Korean show where um, contestants get to go under the knife uh, after they present their story of why they want surgery. And it was just amazing, and it really solidified uh, their reputation in the plastic surgery world for me. So uh, yeah, quick brief thing about how I see Dream. So what I personally loved about Dream is that they did not pressure me to get surgery that I didn't want. Unlike the other clinics uh, that wanted me to get XYZ so I can have like a 180 degree change, so I can get that shock factor, so I can get like clicks and stuff, Dream was not like that. They just was going to suggest surgeries that they feel would enhance my beauty and if I wanted it then I wanted it, if I didn't want it then it's okay. It's all my choice at the end of the day and this was such a relief to hear because a lot of the clinics don't do that. They want you to get surgery. They want you to look different and have that shock factor uh, but they just were very respectful and it really solidified that trust I had for them and really made me feel like I was going to be in good hands. So I came to them with uh, three concerns at first. So I went to them with um, my deviated septum. I said I wanted like a septal rhinoplasty and then you know my chicken wings, <laughs> liposuction on my arms and my abdomen and also I didn't really know what kind of surgery could be done to like sort of reduce like cheek fat so I asked them to suggest something for that for me. <laughs> So um, I went to them for three concerns. They came back to me with seven potential things that I could have done. So four more than um, the three that I had. <laughs> three plus four equals seven. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, they agreed uh, rhinoplasty, um, the liposuction, and they said they would suggest Aculif for my jowls and the subliminum area, but just this part to reduce any cheek fat. Um, and then the other four was the forehead fat graft, the chin implant. Uh, they also suggested zygoma reduction and to do eyelid surgery to adjust my eye line. So obviously if you've watched the other two videos, you already know what surgeries I ended up getting. Um, nose, chin, forehead, arms, uh, cheeks, and my abdomen area. So I did not get the zygoma reduction or the eye line. I, I didn't feel like those were necessary. Um, they were just to correct potential um, 
you know, after I get the Aculif, maybe my cheeks were going to be a little bit embossed, um, which it would be okay because I never really had cheeks. So I didn't really want to get a zygoma reduction because I heard the surge, uh, the recovery for that's really painful and I didn't want to get it if it's just like a maybe. It's just something they suggested. They didn't pressure me. They just said this could happen and you, you could end up looking this way. Um, and yeah, I'm like, it's not a problem if it does and it's okay. <laughs> they were really good with explaining um, each of the surgeries and why they felt that um, I could get it done to enhance my beauty. Um, but yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were just very thorough and I asked a lot of questions. I was like, I was really open-minded about it because I just wanted to see why they suggested it. And um, you know, after they explained it to me, they gave me information about the surgeries, I made my final decision. Um, yeah, <laughs> no zygoma, no eye. Um, the eye line, they wanted to adjust it. Um, at first I didn't see why they wanted to adjust it because all my life <laughs> I've known that my best feature were my eyes and that um, everyone loved my eyes. I knew people who took like f um, photos of my eyes to go get surgery done. Um, I understand why, I guess. Um, like if they lifted it up a little bit, maybe like it would look bigger and brighter and stuff like that, but I didn't feel like it was necessary. I really wanted to get the main concerns out of the way. So the fat transfer of my forehead was something I already knew that they were going to suggest just because I did have a flat forehead and usually anytime somebody gets a um, nose job, they usually kind of like fill out the forehead a little bit just to make it a little bit rounder, sort of just to help flow with the nose better. Um, what surprised me actually was the chin implant. Um, yeah, they told me, uh, you know, if you look at your face, uh, it's you have a short chin, and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, like that, why um, it just always looked kind of odd to me. I didn't, I couldn't really pinpoint that it was my chin. I thought it was maybe my cheeks. Uh, but they explained it, and I was like, yeah, I see that. And they're like, yeah. So if you want it, you can. And I thought about it. I'm like. You know, a couple more millimeters wouldn't hurt. So yeah, I got it done and I'm actually really happy with it. I'm happy with all of the procedures that I got done and yeah. So I really have to stress on how much I love that Dream just treats me like a human being and respects me. Um, you know, just they never repushed any of the surgeries that I rejected back onto me like the other clinics did. And it sounds so simple, like if someone doesn't want it, then they don't want it. But the other clinics, they just always, they would come back to me in a couple days. They're like, no, we really think you should get this. I, we know you think you don't want it, but you need it. Um, you know, and it's just, thank you, Dream. Thank you so much. It's just, I, I didn't feel like I was just a marketing tool. I didn't feel like I was just like a money bag for them. And... I feel like any patient at Dream is their patient. You're just not any other person. And that's what I love about them. And I, I'm just so happy I made the right choice choosing Dream. So on consultation day, the surgeons were very thorough with pinpointing about the concerns that I had and told me how they were going to tackle it. And Julia, oh my god, uh, she translated for me and I'm so happy that Dream has her on their team because she's just so patient, she's so caring, and she's so knowledgeable about everything and it just really made me feel at ease. So on surgery day, again, Julia was just super amazing. I don't know why, but like about three hours before I left the hotel, I got all this anxiety and she really, you know, eased my nerves, walked me through every step, uh, like all the way until after my surgery. I actually think she stayed with me throughout my surgery when I was in the operating room. I, I don't know because, you know, I was under I was under anesthesia. Um, I think I had a conversation with her. I just remember I laughed a lot and I said sorry a lot. <laughs> but it was really amazing. Uh, she's so great. I'm Again, I'm really happy that Dream has her on their team. The staff and the assistants were really gentle with me and made me really comfortable. Their level of patient care is like up here. So here's the funny thing. I thought it was because they knew that I was sponsored and like I was gonna do like a review and all of this but actually aside from Julia nobody else knew that I was a youtuber that I was an influencer that I was getting sponsored the surgery that's just how they operate that's just how they are they're amazing they're ugh, the quality of their patient care is really good um and it's amazing because you know 
before I told them, they just thought I was any other regular patient. And it's, it really shocked me and it, I was just like, wow, you guys are actually, your patient care is really up there. And when you're there, you're not just another person, you're a dream clinic patient. And I don't know, it just made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside that. I really have to say that the surgeons did an amazing job, especially capturing my envisionment of the correct self physically onto myself. And I know that sounds really messed up, but that's really how I feel. Um, like my liposuction, I didn't think I was going to love it so much. Like I love everything that they did, but I think the liposuction procedure is probably my favorite out of everything. I had a lot of external fat in my jaw area, my arms, and my abdomen area that even when um, I lost weight back then, I lost um, so much weight that I ended up weighing like 92 or 93 pounds, but I still looked 140 pounds because of all this external fat. And that was really, really discouraging. Can you believe that? After all that work, I still look fat. <laughs> so yeah, that was super discouraging. And now that all the external fat is gone, my body just looks proportionate. It looks correct. Like, yeah, that there should be that much fat in this area. And um, I really have to stress that liposuction is not a weight loss solution. For me, it's an encouragement that when I do lose weight that I will be proportionate and my body will make sense. So that's how I feel about the liposuction and it really makes me feel so happy when I wear clothes and when I look at myself in the mirror. It looks correct. Obviously there's still, you know, fat here because um, I am overweight. Um, according to my doctor. <laughs> I wear a small but according to my doctor I'm overweight. Um, but yeah, it's just it's even, it's proportionate. The fat distribution is even now and proportionate now that my body looks and makes sense. During my recovery, the Dream Clinic staff was super amazing. Again, with Julia, uh, I actually got to keep in touch with her during my recovery and she would, you know, message me back in a timely manner and address any questions and concerns I had. And for my post-op checkup, I actually got to meet another girl, Vivian. She was also really amazing. She really treated me like a friend and made me feel really comfortable. <laughs> uh, answered anything I had, even like something off topic, like shopping. I asked her, you know, I... I was staying inside the hotel most of the time. She said, oh, you should really, you know, kind of walk around. Uh, you should go shopping. And she suggested the Coex Mall for me. And yeah, it was really great. It was really hot though, but you know, that wasn't her fault. But I was really happy that, you know, she wanted me to, you know, walk around more and really explore Korea more and everything. And it was really great. I really, I really felt like I was their friend. And yeah, again, just warm and fuzzy inside. So, if you couldn't tell, I'm really impressed with the patient care at the Dream Clinic. Like, I knew the surgeons were amazing, they were experienced, and, you know, everything was going to look right. But, <laughs> the patient care really blew me out of the water just because I have spoken with other influencers who have had surgery done at other clinics, and their patient care was not so great. Um, a lot of them, they just felt like they were, you know, cut up at some factory and then they got thrown out because they were just a product. It's like, okay, done, go, meh, whatever. Um, and I was kind of worried about that, uh, that I was going to sort of be treated like that. But obviously, again, as I have mentioned many times, Julia was amazing and really made me feel comfortable and really made me feel like I was being cared for. Uh, so I was just so, so amazed. You know, the surgeons were so experienced, they knew how I wanted to look like and was really able to apply it on me. And yeah, the staff was just so caring. I would definitely pay money out of my own pocket to go to Dream and I'm really happy that I chose Dream to do my plastic surgery. So yeah, I'm just so happy <laughs> that I chose the right clinic. So in order to give a well-rounded review, I really wanted to touch base on some of the things that I was like a little bit disappointed about. Like I'm being like really nitpicky here, uh, but I really did want to give you guys like an opportunity to sort of like see all sides and uh, obviously because like a glowing 100% review is really suspicious. Uh, but I really do feel like there's little to nothing wrong with the Dream Clinic. Uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to, you know, tell you everything that I could. So... 
One of the things that I was a little bit disappointed about was that I wasn't allowed to stay there overnight. Um, so I actually had to be sent home about an hour or two or maybe three hours after I was done my uh, surgery. Um, I asked if I could stay, they said, no, you can't, you, like, you have to go home. And I'm like, okay, um, it's just because I was really dizzy and nauseous and I'm, I'm short-sighted, so my, eye, my eyes are trying to focus. And obviously I couldn't put my glasses on because I did my nose and I didn't have contacts to put in. So um, I was just like a dizzy barfing mess. <laughs> so they took care of me during that time, obviously. Uh, but eventually I did have to go home. The great thing though is like they had a like specific private driver for you to bring you back to your hotel. So I think that that was really great. Like I didn't have to deal with trying to get like a taxi or something or like take public transit. But uh, yeah, he brought me all the way back to my hotel room and made sure everything was okay before he left. And I felt like that was really great like despite not being able to stay overnight at the clinic they had someone to take you all the way back home to your hotel to make sure you're okay and then just yeah i think that was like a great solution uh if they don't allow you to stay overnight um but i really am so glad that they did push me to sort of like not really i guess the word's not really push but to really encourage me to go back home because it was so important to me that I woke up in like a quiet and comfortable environment that was like my own where I could do whatever I want uh, and uh, yeah it kind of just felt like tough love um, you know like it's like yeah I, I know you're uncomfortable right now but it's gonna be better for you in the long run if you wake up back at home in somewhere that you're comfortable so yeah me being nitpicky again <laughs> uh, so the other thing I felt that was a little bit like disappointed about was uh this is like really not a big deal but um most of the time they would provide drivers for you like i mentioned about the last thing uh, but they do not provide drivers for your post-op checkups which is okay except for my first post-op checkup which was um two days after my procedure um i was still sore and everything uh, but you know it was okay I ended up being able to navigate back there it's just that I was sore and I was like really scared of someone like bumping into me which they did and I was really scared of like bumping my nose into places uh, but like honestly like it wasn't too bad navigating to the clinic like these are the things that I felt was negative that's it um, but I did wanted to mention it anyways just so you guys know so I'm not here to encourage or discourage plastic surgery. I got these procedures done because I wanted them for myself. And if you yourself want plastic surgery, that is okay. Uh, as long as it's for yourself and no one else, I think that is all that matters at the end of the day. So I really hope that my plastic surgery series kind of gave you an insight on you know, plastic surgery in general. I know not everybody agrees on it and I understand. I see your point of view on why you would be against it, but I really hope that you guys who are against it can also be open-minded and understand why people do get surgery. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, plastic surgery would have happened within my life timeline whether or not YouTube was there. It's just that because of YouTube, um, it kind of just sped up that timeline a little bit faster for me to um, have surgery done. So yeah, in my opinion, it's it would have happened with or without YouTube. I'm really, really grateful that I was given this opportunity to have the sponsorship with the clinic that I was interested in, to get the surgeries that I wanted, and yeah, just getting the results I've always envisioned myself to have. And to me, wanting to look better isn't a crime. And, you know, for me, it's like getting braces or whitening your teeth. If you want to look better, then look better. It's okay that you want to. And again, as long as it's for yourself, that's all that matters. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please look forward to the uncut consultations, the vlogs, and the other various uh, plastic surgery related videos. I'll try to post more like uh, before and after photos on my Instagram. So follow me there and uh, yeah. I love you guys.